Blender is an amazing piece of software that allows creators from all over the world to create whatever their mind can imagine. However, one of the most unproductive parts of the creative process falls within render time. For complex 3D scenes, it could take a long time to render out a final frame that you might decide isn't good enough. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use other computers you might have sitting idle around you to speed up the rendering process. More on that after the intro. CrowdRender is a free plugin that lets you leverage the power of multiple computers to speed up rendering a scene. As of this video, the free version supports up to Blender version 2.92, although if you choose to donate, you are able to use the early access builds which support newer versions of Blender. CrowdRender currently supports two renderers, so as long as you're using either Cycles or Eevee, you're good to go. Now before we talk about the installation, I want to talk a little bit about what makes a good render server. Obviously, the needs change from project to project, and unless you're part of an animation studio, most of us don't have money to go build a machine with Threadripper and 43090s. However, old gaming PCs that you might have laying around that you've upgraded from could make an awesome little render assistant to your main PC. That's not only because they have a decent CPU, but respectable GPU that can lend a hand in the rendering process. Now, if GPU prices were still not ridiculous, Thanks, I would say with about 100 or 200 bucks, you could go pick up a 1060 or 1070 that could turn an old PC into a pretty decent render server. But since that isn't the case, you're just going to have to see through some trial and error if your render nodes actually improve the speed of your render times. And before we install the add-on itself, I just want to talk very briefly on what operating system you should run on your servers. I chose to run Linux, more specifically Pop! OS, on my render servers after watching this video from CG Geek detailing the performance difference between running Blender on Linux and Windows. And while metrics like program startup time didn't mean much to me, when I saw how much of a performance advantage Linux had over Windows rendering the same exact scene, it just didn't make sense to choose to install Windows when Linux is completely free and a fun experiment to try. The installation process is the same for the main master computer and all the render nodes. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is install Blender version 2.92. So head over to blender.org, click on the download tab, and then click on the previous versions tab and click where it says download every version of Blender. That will open up the index for all the versions of Blender ever made, and we can scroll down to version 2.92 to download the installer for our respective operating system. Now we're gonna head over to the CrowdRender website, and you can find that link down in the description. Once you sign up for a free account, you can download the .zip for the latest public build of CrowdRender. Make sure you don't extract this because Blender can install a plugin directly from a zip. Now let's open Blender and then head to the edit preferences menu. Click on the add-ons button on the left and then the install button in the top right corner. Then we can navigate to where our CrowdRender zip is located and click the blue install button. Click accept to any prompts that may appear asking for access through your firewall so CrowdRender can communicate with other devices on the network. Once you have done this on the master computer and all the render nodes, it's time to test out our DIY render farm. To add our render nodes, the master computer needs to know what IPs to look for. Since my machines run Linux, I run the if command in a terminal window, which shows me my local IP address. You can also find this on Windows by typing ipconfig in a command prompt window. On our main machine, we're going to head over to the render properties tab on the right of our Blender window and switch our render engine to CrowdRender. Once we do that, scroll down to the CrowdRender dropdown option to configure our render nodes. This is where we can choose our render engine, manually specify how much load we wanna be placed on each node, and finally add our nodes. Hit the plus button and then name the node and enter the IP address of your render servers one by one. Make sure Blender is running on each of the render servers and once that's finished, you should be able to hit the connect button on the bottom to connect to all the render nodes. This is also where you can change the setting per render node if you wanna render with CUDA or CPUs only. So if I open a scene and hit F12, you can see that this simple cube frame is being split across three different computers. You can also choose to disable or enable certain render 
render nodes. So if you would like to only have the remote computers doing the rendering, then you can disable the local machine to not bog down your main PC. Now the setup for CrowdRender really is that simple and for the most part, it works as intended. However, the biggest hurdle I had to jump over was to find how to share simulation caches for physics-based events. So for example, I had a scene with a particle emitter and a wind modifier, and when I went to render it on the network, each computer had its own interpretation of how the particles would interact with the wind. So in the final render, a third of the frame would be doing something else in the other third, and then the other third, so it just didn't stitch up properly. To solve this, if you're using Linux, we can create a Samba share on each of the servers that we can drag and drop the blend cache into from the main PC. To do this, I'm gonna reference this great article made by the people over at Ubuntu, which I'm gonna link down below, but I'm gonna run through it real quick for you guys. So first we're going to make sure all of our packages are updated using sudo apt update, and then we're going to install the Samba package by writing sudo apt install Samba. Instead of creating a directory that will be used as our Samba share, we're going to point to the folder that CrowdRender creates on each of the render nodes to store the .blend and other related files. On Linux, this is located right in the home directory. So we need to edit the Samba config file by typing sudo nano-etc dash samba dash smb dot conf and then at the bottom of the file we are going to follow the template provided for creating a new samba share then we are going to hit control zero and control x to exit and save finally we are going to restart samba to acknowledge our new changes we need to configure a samba password for our main linux user by running the command sudo smb password dash a and then input your username where it says username we will then use this username and password to connect to the share from your main computer. On Windows, we can connect to the server by opening a new file explorer and then typing in backslash backslash the IP address of your server and then backslash blender share. We can make it a little easier to access our Samba shares by mapping a network drive so it appears in the sidebar of the file explorer. Now that we've got all that set up, it's time to share all the assets to all the nodes. Go to a scene that uses some physics-based emitter like smoke, fire, water, or particle emitters. Go to the particle properties tab on the left and go down to the dropdown where it says cache. We are going to click on disk cache, which will write our simulation cache to the disk instead of memory, and then click use library path. Then we're gonna go to file, external data, and click make all file pass relative. This is so when CrowdRender runs on all of our nodes, it will look for the simulation cache relative to where the .blend file is saved rather than an absolute file path that those computers do not have access to. Once you bake your simulation, you should see a blend cache folder in the same place where your .blend file is located. This is the folder we are going to want to copy to our nodes, so hit Control C to copy it. Then on each render node, we are going to go to the server folder, and then the most recent folder created should be our current project, but you can verify this by double checking the .blend file name. Then we plop the blend cache right in there and should be good to go. This process is the same for sharing materials or images or any other asset. Now each computer follows the same simulation cache instead of creating its own. Now the downside to this is you are going to have to recopy that folder to all the render nodes every time you rebake the simulation, which can be a pain in the ass. However, I tried doing it with Google Drive and Dropbox a little bit, and this is just the best method I found. If you know of a better way we can keep these folders in sync, then let me know down in the description. I'm thinking maybe you could have the blend file on a NAS, and then each computer has access to the NAS, but that takes a lot more setup. I wanna show you guys how much quicker we can render scenes using CrowdRender. My main computer is a small form factor PC with a Ryzen 5 3600, GTX 1060 6 gigabyte, and 32 gigs of RAM. My first render node is my old gaming PC with an AMD FX 8350, GTX 750 Ti, and 16 gigs of RAM. Finally, my last render node is the Dell XPS 15 we did an unboxing of last year, and that's got an Intel Core i7 10875H, 
GTX 1650 Ti and 64 gigs of RAM. Between these three computers, I have 22 CPU cores and 2800 CUDA cores at my disposal. Now, obviously these three computers are not the same in terms of speed, so it wouldn't actually be any quicker if CrowdRender gave equal parts to each computer because then the two quicker computers would be waiting on the one slower one. To get around this, CrowdRender constantly automatically load balances after you render the first frame. So for example, my setup has three computers. So the first frame I render, it will give a third of the frame to each computer. But after that, CrowdRender load balances. So it gives slower computers less of the frame to render and faster computers more of the frame to render. So they finish at the same time. It will take a couple of frames, but CrowdRender will figure out the sweet spot of load balancing for each computer. So each computer finishes at the same time and we're not sitting idle waiting for a slow computer to finish. So I'm gonna do three render tests the classic BMW car demo, then a much more modern Blender classroom demo, and then finally the barbershop from Agent 327, which you should definitely go and watch if you haven't. Hello everyone, this is Chris from way, way in the future, and I know past me said I only did three tests, but I have a bit of a treat for you. My roommate, who has a ballin computer, it's got, I think, a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, I'll have that on the screen, but it, most importantly, it's got a 2080 Super, which is like gold right now in the GPU shortage. So he kindly let me set up CrowdRender on his computer. So we did kind of a best scenario benchmark with his PC. So I've got my computer with a 1060 running Linux. I got his computer with a 2080 Super running Windows. So keep in mind, these results can be better if his computer was also running Linux, but you can see the kind of monster performance you can get when your render nodes actually have some oomph to them. And if I really wanted, I could have just kicked the job just to his computer and then I would be free on my computer to keep working. It's not tied down rendering this 3D scene. One thing I want to point out is you may think, wow, you only save a couple minutes rendering a still image. What's the big deal? Why would you spend um, an upwards of thousands of dollars to do this? Well, if you're really serious um, about it or, you know, you just have computers laying around when you do an animation that's hundreds or even thousands of frames, you can save hundreds of hours. And this is why this is so compelling to people who do a lot of 3D work. And so if you're kind of a hobbyist, you could probably throw together a secondary gaming rig uh, and use it as a render node. And that could save you a lot of time. Anyway, back to past me. All right, guys, so that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, then please make sure to leave a like and leave a comment down below of what you would want to see next time. I really enjoyed making this video because it helped me learn a lot more about Blender and also distributed computing. So that's about it for this video. I'm Chris, and we will see you guys next week.